Hi, my name is Amir Abdullah. I'm one of your reference and instructional services librarians here at the University of Hawaii William S. Richardson School of Law Library. In this short video, we will be discussing the hierarchy of legal authority. Our agenda for this video will include a brief introduction to your legal research professors. Then, the meat of the presentation will be on the hierarchy of legal authority. I will conclude by bidding you all a fond farewell. So let me be the first to welcome you to the wonderful world of legal research. On this slide, I am sharing the pictures and names of your three legal research professors. In the spring, each one of you will inevitably wind up in either my or one of these glorious gentlemen's classes. Of course, you can tell that the first picture is on me. Yes, it's a picture from the past, but really, all pictures are of the past. Next, you can see Professor Corey Lines. He's our Blue Book expert. And finally, at the very bottom, you'll see Professor Daniel Blackaby. He is a wonderful resource. And honestly, all three of us are available to help you with your research needs. So keep us in mind if you ever run into any issues in legal research. If you are allowed to use our services, we're more than happy to help out. So, on to the meat of the matter, the hierarchy of legal authority. Really, you can think about the hierarchy of legal authority as being broken down in two ways, primary and secondary authority, and then mandatory versus persuasive. Let's dive further into this topic. What is primary and secondary authority? The rule of thumb is that primary authority is created by one of the branches of government, the legislative branch, the executive branch, or the judicial branch. Whereas secondary authority explains or provides commentary on primary authority. Let's dig a little deeper, yeah? Primary authority is what people in our lives mean when they use the term the law. Think about your dad, your uncle, your brother, your mother, your baby's mother. It doesn't matter. It's when your friends or these people say the term, the law says, whatever. They're usually talking about primary authority. These are statutes, which are created by the legislative branch, regulations, which are promulgated by the executive branch, and of course, case opinions, which are drafted by the judicial branch. Here, I provided you all with examples of primary authority. No, primary authority can be created by both state and federal governments. And here, I've attempted to provide you examples of both federal and Hawaiian examples. For cases, we can see the Obergefell v. Hodges Supreme Court case and the State v. Wilson court case from the Supreme Court of Hawaii. In terms of statutes, I provided you an example of the United States Code and the Hawaii Revised Statutes. Lastly, in terms of regulations, I provide citations to the Code of Federal Regulations as well as the Hawaii Code of Rules. This then must lead to a conversation about secondary authority. If primary authority is the law, what is secondary authority? Again, Secondary authority is never the law. Rather, secondary authority explains the law. Secondary authority includes encyclopedias and jurisprudence material, which are written by legal experts, treatises, no, not treaties, treatises. Treatises are written by practitioners and scholars. There's of course the restatements of the law, which is written by the American Law Institute, and law journals. These are written by scholars, including students like yourself. There are, of course, many additional types of secondary authority, but I provided you a baseline here on this slide. Examples of each of these types of secondary authority include, for encyclopedias and jurisprudence, the American Jurisprudence Series and American Law Reports, for treatises, Nimeron Copyright and Native Hawaiian Law, a treatise. This book, right here. Notice how these secondary sources 
are hyper-focused on particular areas, such as copyright and Native Hawaiian law. For restatements of the law, an example may include their statement of torts. You'll probably hear more about this particular restatement in your torts class. And as far as law journals go, examples include the ABA Journal and your very own University of Hawaii Law Review. Beyond just thinking about the hierarchy of legal authority as being primary and secondary, you should also consider whether these resources are mandatory or persuasive. Remember, primary authority may be mandatory or persuasive, but secondary authority is never mandatory. It will always be persuasive. Let me elaborate a little further. When we think about primary authority in terms of legal research, I think it's safe to say that what we are really hoping to locate is primary authority that is also mandatory. Mandatory primary authority being the statutes, regulations, and cases that apply to the jurisdiction governing your client's legal question. Remember, there are parallels between state and federal jurisdictions that may help you. As I pointed out in a previous slide, there are state codes and federal codes, state regulations and federal regulations. What is a tad bit more confusing is that there are state cases and federal cases, and these cases can be heard at various court levels. On the federal side, cases usually start out at the federal district courts, then move on to the United States Court of Appeals, and finally, those cases may wind up at the United States Supreme Court. No, there are various circuits for the Court of Appeals level. Here, I'm simply reminding you that Hawaii sits on the Ninth Circuit. As far as state courts go, the names of the various levels may be different depending on the state. Here in Hawaii, our state cases will begin at the circuit court or district court level, then move on to the Intermediate Court of Appeals, finally reaching the highest court of our state, the Hawaii Supreme Court. I know there's a lot to take in. So if you find yourself lost, remember, the William S. Richardson School of Law Library has you covered with a library guide that can help you determine jurisdiction. Going back to primary authority, remember, primary authority may be either mandatory or persuasive. An example of a time when primary authority is not mandatory is when you have a case, statute, or regulation from a separate jurisdiction than the one you're practicing in. An easy way to conceptualize this is to think about, does a Texas court really care what Colorado has to say about driving under the influence? No. And Hawaii doesn't necessarily care about what Texas has to say about it. And I'm sure that there are other examples of primary law not being mandatory that you'll figure out as you go through law school. An example of a kind of primary authority that is all, always mandatory is the U.S. Constitution. Now, you'll have an incredibly brief framework of the hierarchy of legal authority. But before we part ways, I'd like to bring up a caveat. There is a wrinkle that arises when one researches historical Hawaii laws. We do not have time to get into this topic in this short video. But when you're commencing such research, please consult the Hawaii Legal Research Hawaii Laws Library Guide from the William S. Richardson School of Law Library website. Or reach out to either Professor Lenz, Professor Blackaby, or myself. Finally, if any of you amazing viewers have any questions at all from this video or any of your classes concerning legal research, please come over to the law library or email me at amir at hawaii.edu or email Professor Lenz at corylenz at hawaii.edu or email Professor Blackaby at blackaby at hawaii.edu. I really appreciate y'all's time and effort in learning about the hierarchy of legal authorities. 
I hope to see you all around.